Christopher Monks and hang on a minute Russia uh, Dmitry Medvedev uh, is a climate change denier that's what you're saying is it? No I'm saying that the Russian Academy of Scientists Mr Ilya Ilarionov I'm talking about the government uh, came, came I, I'm to talking a about very the government. clear view on this a couple you, of years ago just, and said that there was no basis for I just said global that the 192 together, countries Academy agree you said no they said don't like Russia doesn't it? Um, the American Association of State Climatologists has said that it's mostly nonsense. Christopher, if you selectively um, quote all the people on your side, it will sound quite scientific <laughs> Christopher, I'm sorry, you just said something that was a load of nonsense. I said, you said the Russian government doesn't believe that climate change is man-made and real. No, what You're I said is the Russian Academy of Sciences uh, yes. doesn't. Yeah. No, well, that's um, not true, The Russian Christopher. Academy of Sciences doesn't. The Russian government, and however, found it expedient to sign the Kyoto Protocol. This guy, Ilya, believed, he's got connections to people. Not because it believed in climate change, but because it did a deal with Tony Blair by which, if it was willing to sign the Kyoto Protocol, he would give it various concessions in return mm. in world trade talk. Okay, Christopher, so that's, that's not the, the same these as... These that is not the same. Let me say something that here. Is Look, we, we're getting we hung up here. The, we bribed the Russians to sign the Kyoto Protocol. That's, that's absolutely what true. Happened, yes. Yes. That's not the same as, uh, as them not believing the in climate change. No, 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 absolutely not. That's, that's a different... You're talking about different points, Christopher. You've got to be careful how you present your arguments here, Christopher. I said a moment... The Russians are also making very large sums of money out of the clean development You're getting bogged down in something that's... UN financial boondoggles, which make all right. countries like Russia very rich, provided that they're willing to say they believe okay. that the climate is changing. I'm going to say, I'm going to just speak it, quite prepared to Nobody say regards the Russians as the leading authority on, on climate change. Well, so this also, is pretty damn irrelevant. I could cite the Canadian government, sorry. I could cite the Japanese, no, I could you, cite you, the Czech can I, can Republic I coming well? nearer to home. There uh, are quite a number uh, of governments that have not, uh, not on the Kool Aid. There may be, Christopher. I'm going to just speak, and no one's going to, you're not going to talk about me. Christopher, there's no point just talking constantly here. Christopher, the point I'm making here, it's a slightly semantic one, you were trying to be a bit clever, I said these governments agree, you said no they don't, you cited as an example Russia, and actually you do not know if the Russian government believes in man-made climate change. So what you said in that instant was inaccurate. Um, Nick and Bristol, you were trying to come back in. Oh, right, OK, yeah, well basically, for example, OK, there was, um, if you look at the, like, um the climate graph for say the past thousand years we had a period called the medieval warm period which was like two or three degrees warmer and there wasn't any cars and then it got a lot colder and we're actually a lot colder than what it was there and there hasn't wasn't any cars then so it was like for 500 years that is it was not like, proof it was in like, itself that it is was not like proof. two or three degrees warmer than it is now Nick, Nick. and also they just found out one thing okay they they um they chored, like they surveyed a the bed of a lake in Ireland, and they found out that Ireland went from being kind of temperate like it is now to being Arctic in the space of a couple of months. And that's just come out in the past few months. Okay, they Nick, found Nick, that out. let's just let's so it all from, happens naturally. Well, it does happen naturally to some extent. No one changes. No one denies bit, it happens bit, to some extent. Explain a few scientific. Yeah, things. Do, can you do it in kind of layman's terms? Oh. I'm getting too technical. I'll and Nick will listen. I'll try, and we'll, I'll try and do that. Here's what's going to happen. We're all going to shut up and we're going to listen to Phil for about 45 okay. seconds okay. or so. Okay. Phil. Yeah. It, it, it's not the fact that climate changes. The cli climate does change all the time. It's the speed with, w with which it's changing and, of course, whether that, that's caused by man, which... Um, scientists now agree overwhelmingly that it is but the evidence is not only about the temperature it's about the quantity of heat trapping gases in the atmosphere that create that and we know that the quantity of co2 and other heat trapping gases in the atmosphere is vastly more than it has been for um, millions of years so that is completely different from anything in the medieval warm period. And that's really the point. That's why scientists are worried, because looking at the historical record, the temperature has always you know, stuck to pretty close relationship to those heat-trapping gases in the atmosphere. And that's why we're worried, because it looks like that there's a big temperature increase that's in the pipeline, waiting to catch up with, with, with the concentration. Okay, can, of I, can I say gases. something to that? Yeah. Uh, basically, OK, well, the world goes through periods of, like... Um, extra, you know, periods of more volcanism than others, and volcanoes took out far more gas than we'll ever make. You know, end of story. And so, there's Not millions of there's millions of volcanoes under the sea, 
and the sea is a massive CO2 sink. So if you heat the sea up, it releases CO2 and it spikes it. Okay. And so right. if we're yeah. going into if we're going into a period of volcanism, which it does look like we are, and a few other things as well, then that will spike it. And you could look at it and say, well, fair enough. But really, mm. we don't really do very much humanly, you know. Mm. And if it is, then we we have to look well, out. Would you like me to explain his anyway. about the Irish peat bog? Because I, I can I, explain why that happened. I'm sure you can. The problem is we could, there, there is so much detail we could go into. And I, I, we've got okay. some callers who want to come on. Okay. Nick's had quite a bit of airtime there. Thank you, Nick. This is not scientific. Look at the texts that come in. 90% of the texts coming in are, are from people saying that they do not believe in man-made climate change. And only 10% of the texts we're getting right now do believe. Now, that may be a reaction to the discussion. It may be that... The, and those people are more likely to want to text because they would feel kind of angry and stronger. Maybe they feel the like they're a minority voice yes. who want to be heard. Uh, maybe. Well, I, I, I don't know. know. You see, the, it's not a minority voice. The vast majority of the populations now in most English-speaking countries do not believe that this is a problem. And indeed, more and more of them realise that this is not a matter of belief. It is a matter of diligent scientific inquiry, which still continues. And after nine years of statistically significant global cooling worldwide, you can hardly say that the climate is somehow heating up. We know that the supposed heat-trapping gases that are supposed to be in the atmosphere are not, in fact, trapping the heat down here. There are a number of recent scientific papers uh, that establish this quite well. Okay. It isn't accumulating there's, in the There's ocean. an increased... It isn't there's, we're in hearing so much about it this now because there's a huge space. backlash and it against the increasing warming. evidence about global warming and most of all there's a backlash because people now feel we're actually going to do something about that okay, that's go. why people are getting so exercised that's why we're hearing so much about it because the best way for people to avoid it, the issue altogether is to pretend it's not happening okay, that's call what's happening time. on the big call scale the time. here we go Marjorie in Halifax good evening David Hello, Marjorie. Brecken uh, hi you, everyone you can um, all come on Marjorie you're on first go ahead okay um, is it true that over the last 10 years there has been no rise in the global Heat, yes, think? that is correct. That is right. That is correct. No, it's, it's correct not correct. Averaged out, it's not the correct. UAH I'm sorry. Record, <laughs> it's the not RSS true. satellite record, the Hadley well, satellite time, record, we're all going to get headaches. the TRU satellite, they all show the same. Oh, right, so it is, so it is correct. No, it it's is not. Correct. There has been okay. no global warming, okay. in fact, for 15 uh, years. Okay, Christopher, you've had your say. One? Can I just Marjorie? have a quick one, Richard? Yes, Marjorie. There's probably an awful lot of hot air and gas over Manchester at the moment. Emitting uh, from the studio? Uh, 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 we're actually not in Manchester yet, oh, Marjorie, okay. but I, I mean, it's, there's a lot in this room. Um, <laughs> but we're actually we're in London. We're going to be in Manchester in the middle of 2011. But thank yeah. you, Marjorie. D oh. Dave, nice to speak to you. Dave, Dave in Brecon. Um, yes, I'd just like to uh, give a vote of support to Phil, who was objecting at the beginning of the programme to the title of the debate. Mm -hmm. And I agree that I think that it is trivialising and uh, in many ways sensationalising and it, it's not helpful. I think uh, the BBC's aim should be to inform and to educate, and therefore, you know, I think that you should acknowledge that it would be better to phrase this debate in something like, to what extent are human beings accelerating cl climate change or responsible for that? To say that it is a con is trivialising it in a dangerous way, and I don't think it's helpful at all. So well, I, I think that point, he was Dave, quite right enough. to be passionate. Well, no, of course he's right to be passionate, and to, to free, you're free to say that, Dave, but... If we phrase the question, to what extent is man accelerating climate change, that presupposes that man is definitely doing it. And that would mean that the BBC would be refusing to give a platform to people who don't believe that you man is accelerating. You give a platform for the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> and there will be some debates when they'd be very be interesting to hear from you them, I'm sure. No, but and there's the, a reason for that. You, there does come a point when you have to look at the figures, and there is there comes a, a point quite where a, you have to look a, a from the your point of view, a worryingly high percentage of people in the general public who listen to the BBC, who pay their license fee, who do not believe that's, in man-made climate change. And, and if we phrase our question the way that Dave suggested it, we would freeze out millions of voices who are. Have you heard tonight? Who are texting us? Who do not believe? that man-made climate change is real. But so it's we chicken and egg, isn't it? Those people are there partly because the BBC's done such a lousy job up to now. And the fact that, that it, those views are You can't expect the BBC so to much. further the scientific community's agenda. It may well be... They that you, you should further 
what does educate mean, for God's sake? And who are you going to trust to, to tell you about science if it isn't the scientific community? Is it the BBC determining what science is? And what the does educate mean? The scientific community is, is far more divided on this issue than Phil is, is giving them credit Could, for. Okay. Listeners won't believe me, but they All would right. need to actually have to consult, you know, the, 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 you know actually check out what the scientific okay, community is really okay, saying. OK, fair enough. Listen, uh, Christopher Monkton, leading yeah. climate change skeptic, thank you for coming on the programme uh, tonight. Phil Thornhill, National Coordinator for the Campaign Against Climate Change.